Welcome to another online worship service hosted by the Congregational Church of Wells as we gather on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. My continued thanks to the worship team for making these online services possible and thanks to the musicians who contribute so much to these services. The Barnard and Andrews families have again asked me to extend their thanks for the continued love and support from the church family on the passing of Robin and Kaki's brother, Bob Rashi Jr. All the expressions of concern have been a great source of comfort for them as they grieve their loss. There will be a gathering outside the church tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, weather permitting. Bring a chair, a cup of coffee, and a mask. There will be a worship team meeting this Tuesday at 1 p.m. Trustees will meet on Tuesday at 6 p.m. and the diaconate will also meet on Tuesday at 7 p.m. The Executive Council will meet on Wednesday, September 2nd at 7 p.m. The search committee is meeting every Thursday and they are discussing candidate profiles that have been received. Next Sunday, September 6th, we will share in symbolic communion during our online service. Even though we cannot receive the elements together, we will take this time to reaffirm the meaning of this sacrament for all of us. We will be offering outdoor prayer services at 5 p.m on the three Sundays after Labor Day in September, September 13th, 20th, and 27th. Let us join together in the call to worship based on Exodus 3, 1 through 15, and Matthew 16, 21 through 28. We gather together to worship the God of our fathers and mothers, the God of Abraham and Sarah, of Miriam and Moses, who hears the cries of his people and comes to their aid, who meets us on holy ground and calls us to follow, who invites us to leave our selfish ways behind, take up our cross, and discover what it means to truly live. This is our God. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, now to His temple draw near. Glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore Him. All that has life and breath come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from his people again, gladly forever adore him. Let us join together now for our opening prayer. God, you are made known to us in the rustling wind that blows, in the blazing fire that does not consume, in the face of the good, in the deep of the unknown. We accept your greeting. We welcome your inspiration. We await the change you have in store for us. Draw us in to you. Inhabit our spirits, focus our attention. Bring us to you, you who are already with us. Help us to be as you would have us to be. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. <clears throat> as we 
share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks to all those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. The chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. Prayers for the family of Donna Berg, who passed away on August 26th after being in hospice care for three weeks. Donna, along with her husband Jack, are much loved members of our church family and had moved to Massachusetts in 2017. Continue, continued prayers for the family of Bob Rashi Jr. and the Cole, Borse, Avery, and Layton families. Prayers for Emily, Maggie and Jim, Bill, Sue, Harry, Carol, Julie, Kevin, Paul, Emily, Bobby, Peter, Alan, Selena, Paul. Prayers as well for John, Jean and Bruce, Amy, Carrie, Nadine, Roberta, Courtney, Jean and Neil, Lee and Rita, June, Christine, Claire, Maria and Ray, Cindy, Antonio, Sylvia, Marlene, and Alan and Carol. Prayers also for our summer church family who we are missing, some who have been coming to Wells and to our church for many years. They are with us in spirit and hopefully some are attending our online services. Let us join now for our pastoral prayer. God, we hear you calling to serve you and to serve others in your name. And like Moses, we often respond by saying, who am I to do what you have called me to do? We often feel unworthy and ill-equipped for the purposes to which you call us. Help us to trust in the power of your spirit working within and around us to empower us to fulfill your calling for our lives. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by the devastation of Hurricane Laura. May you offer comfort, encourage, encouragement, strength, and hope to those who have been impacted by this devastating storm. We continue to pray for those who have been affected by COVID-19. Help us all throughout the world to have the patience to do those things that slow the spread of the virus. And may we continue to pray for those who have been infected and for those who have lost loved ones to this merciless disease. We lift up the names of those in our joys and concerns and pray that you offer comfort, hope, encouragement and strength to those who are in special need of your presence. And now as we offer these prayers before you, Lord, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. And now let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
storm howls above me and there's no hiding place May the crash of the thunder precious Lord hear my cry, keep me safe Till the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow of thy hand Safe till the storm passes by. When the long night is ended and the storm comes no more. Stand in my presence on that bright, peaceful shore In the land where the tempest never comes Lord, may I dwell with thee when the storm passes by Till the storm passes over Till the thunder sounds no more Till the clouds roll forever from the sky Hold me fast, let me stand In the hollow world I hear Keep me safe till the storm passes by. Keep me safe till the storm passes by. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had come over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer. God said, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say the Israelites, the Lord, the God, your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. May God add his blessing to our understanding of his holy word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.
One day, I received an email from a friend from a previous church. It seems that a group of four UCC clergy folk have been meeting weekly for prayer and Bible study, focusing on the lectionary lesson for the coming Sunday. Often when they could not agree on an interpretation of scripture, they would take a vote for whatever value a majority opinion might be. At one of those meetings, they could not agree on an allegorical value of the parable in the upcoming lesson. And following their custom, they conducted a straw vote with a three to one result. The lone pastor, being particularly passionate about his minority opinion, fell to his knees in prayer and cried out, Lord, you have spoken to me so clearly in the word. Please open the eyes of these others so that they might see the truth. Naturally, the clouds rolled in, the thunder boomed, and the lightning flashed, and a booming voice from above spoke to the three, saying, He understands me well. His reading of the text is right. A stunned silence fell over the group. Seconds seemed to pass like hours. Finally, one of the three spoken said, hmm, that still just makes it three to two. <laughs> Sometimes we don't recognize the presence of God in our midst. Sometimes we don't recognize the holy moments of our lives. In our reading this morning, Moses has an up-close encounter with the holy. Moses is out in the wilderness, minding his own business, caring for his father-in-law's flock. Suddenly, he notices that a bush is on fire, but it is not consumed. In the heat of the day, Moses might have assumed that his eyes were deceiving him, that the heat from the sun was making the air ripple much as you and I have seen on a hot summer day. So he takes a second look, and sure enough, the bush is burning, but it is not consumed. Moses is astounded by the extraordinary nature of what he beholds, realizes that God is present at that moment and at that place, and that he stands on holy ground. What makes ground holy? How do we know when we are on holy ground? Moses' encounter with the burning bush helps us to recognize that any time we have an encounter with God, we are on holy ground. Which is to say that we are on holy ground more often than we might think. It can happen when we are in the wilderness, whether literally, as was the case of Moses, or figuratively, as when we go through wilderness times in our lives, when we feel lost and uncertain about where we are going. It can happen in a place of natural beauty. How many times have you felt God's presence in the beauty that surrounds us all each day? It can happen in relationships with other people when you experience a depth of love that reflects the love of God. It can even happen in the midst of upheaval and tumult. How often have we been witnesses to the presence of God in the midst of this pandemic, as those on the front line of our society heroically risk their lives to do their job? In the voices of those who cry out for justice, who dream of a day when all God's children will be loved and cherished in determination of those who strive to provide for their families in the midst of a shrieking economy. You never know when you're going to be standing on holy ground, for we can experience God's presence anywhere along our faith journeys. But what difference do these experiences make in the living of our lives? First, we gain a sense of purpose. Much of the time, our lives are a lot like the life of Moses before the encounter with the burning bush. We go about our routines day in, day out. Then we stand on holy ground. We encounter God, and nothing is ever the same again. 
Sometimes we change careers because the encounter on holy ground has led us to believe that our work is not in line with God's plan for our lives. Sometimes we invest in new goals for our lives, goals that are more in keeping with God's teachings. Sometimes our relationships are transformed so that our interaction with others are more in keeping with the witness of the loving Christ. Time and time again, great purposes were born on holy ground. The liberation of the Israel, the people of Israel, began on the holy ground of Mount Horeb, as we heard in our reading today. Jesus' call to ministry happened on the holy ground of the River Jordan, and then it was confirmed in Jesus' 40 days sojourn in the wilderness. The call of the Apostle Paul occurred on the holy ground on the road to Damascus. Think about your own lives. Think about the fundamental purposes to which you are committed. In each case, I would strongly suspect that each of those co commitments grew from an encounter with God on holy ground. Encounters with the holy also help us to become instruments of God's liberation and healing. Another consequence of Moses' encounter with God on holy ground was that he received a call to liberate the people of Israel from the oppression of Pharaoh and to heal them from the psychological damage caused by their slavery. Times that we have encountered the holy are times that have called us to be on the side of liberation for all people. That is why people of faith have been at the forefront of the abolitionist movement, the social gospel movement that fought for fair labor laws, the civil rights movement, the women's movement, and now the continued movement for racial justice for all people. Encounters with the holy also inspire us to convey God's love to others. When we are on holy ground and we have a direct encounter with God, we realize how deeply God loves us and how obliged we are to share that love with others. William C. Green, a writer for the UCC, still speaking daily devotionals, put it this way, God's kindness is not the result of the changes we make, make in life. God's kindness leads us to change, to be more loving, more forgiving, more gracious to others. Dr. William Coffin, one of the great prophets of the 20th century, used to say that the words of assurance ought to precede rather than follow the general prayer of confession. As we read in scripture, we love because God first loved us. God gives us the gift of love, not to keep to ourselves, but to share with others, to pay it forward to those that we touch each day. As we reflect on the experience of standing on holy ground and what that means for our lives, we become increasingly aware of the fact that one of the most important purposes of the church is to help us to recognize those times when we are standing on holy ground, times when we experience the presence of God, and to help us to discern the meaning of those experiences for our lives. The Congregational Church of Wells is profoundly grateful to all who have continued to mail in pledges and donations in spite of these remarkably difficult times. Through your gifts, the Church is able to continue to minister with strength and serve as a beacon of hope in these troubled times. And now go out into the world to join God in the work of love, of peace, of justice. Take in the breath of life. Take off your shoes. Know that you are ever in the presence of the holy and living God. Go in peace. Amen.